Back in the heady 1990s, Samsung, yes, Samsung, the Korean conglomerate, decided it was time to enter the automobile sector and build a car, and they went all in with a brand new state-of-the-art factory and a vehicle based on a respected Japanese design. The result was a massive failure that lasted for just two years and whose collapse was a combination of bad product and historically bad timing. This is the story of the Samsung car. Welcome back to All Cars, y'all. I am John, and before we get to the car, let's look back at Samsung and their history and how they got to this point. Today, Samsung is a juggernaut that is among the largest companies in consumer electronics, chip making, ship building, construction, life insurance, and advertising in the world. It was founded back in 1938 at a time when Korea was under Japanese occupation, and it was founded as a trading company dealing in dried fish, groceries, and noodles. From there, it built itself up and began diversifying, and by the 60s had entered the electronics industry with its first product being a TV. Now, this name Samsung means three stars in Korean, and with the three being translated largely as something big, numerous, powerful, and the stars implying an everlasting or eternal. But it also is meant to be an homage to Mitsubishi, whose name can also be translated as Three Diamonds. Now, the founder of Samsung died in 1987 after starting this global expansion and investment in the electronic segment, and his replacement sold off divisions of the company to focus on just three industries, electronics, engineering, and chemicals, while also looking for additional diversification. By 1992, they were the world's largest producer of memory chips, and in 95, they produced their first liquid crystal displays. In fact, they were so good at it that Sony from Japan reached out to them for a partnership on their LCDs. Looking at the electronics and the electrics that they make, the company realized that automobiles were a combination of many of their core strengths, and in 1994 reached a licensing agreement with Nissan as their technical partner, and a company that was unfortunately itself already in financial trouble, and in March of 1995, they formed Samsung Motors. There's also the simple fact that Hyundai and Samsung were historically bitter rivals, competing in multiple segments like construction and shipbuilding, and with Samsung losing its place at number one. So building an auto company was seen as a way to curb some of Hyundai's ambitions in that segment as well. But their interest in the auto sector actually dates back all the way to 1978 when they explored acquiring Sinjin Automobile of Korea, now a defunct automaker. But they also approached Toyota and Volkswagen for technical alliances. Through the 80s and the early 90s, they approached Chrysler, Fiat, VW, Honda, BMW, and Peugeot as well, and their heavy industries actually formed a partnership with Nissan Diesel on trucks since about 1990. To accelerate their plan into the automobile sector, Samsung actually tried a hostile takeover of Kia in the first half of the 90s, but the government ended up rejecting that plan and stopping it. So they had to plow ahead, and by November of 1996, construction of their auto plant in Busan was completed at an estimated cost of $4 billion, and with their first product expected in 1998. Unfortunately, while a thoroughly modern plant, it actually added to a problem of oversupply of production capability in Korea. And their timing couldn't have been worse. In July 1997, the Asian financial crisis began and quickly began spreading like a contagion, and the Korean conglomerates with aggressive expansion plans were particularly at risk. They were burdened with high debt and very vulnerable, and in mid-1997, Kia defaulted on its loans and was forced into receivership. Samsung, in the first round of bids, actually was the highest bidder, but ultimately through multiple rounds, they were outbid by Hyundai. Samsung now had no option but to continue with their car plans, and in March of 1998, their first car, called the SM5, was produced, going on sale in April. 
Now the SM5 was based on the then four-year-old A32 Nissan Maxima with more dowdy styling. Four Nissan engines were offered and both five-speed manual and four-speed automatics. While sales were acceptable at around 44,000 units that first year, unfortunately it was at a time when Korea had the slowest sales year ever recorded. And it's been consistently rumored that many of those first year sales were to Samsung employees who were, quote, encouraged to support the company's products. Regardless, the company was hemorrhaging money from its massive investments, losing about $192 million in the first two quarters. And in December of 98, they began talks with Renault. Second year sales of the SM5 were even worse, believed to be around 17,000 units, and the end was near. In late 98 and early 99, Daewoo offered to swap their electronics division for Samsung Motors. The plan ultimately failed and Daewoo ended up bankrupt in August of 1999. And in late 2000, Renault bought a 70% stake in Samsung Motors, possibly spurred by their investment in beleaguered Nissan, of course now a partner with both companies. While Samsung Motors' story actually ends here, it's important to know that the company continues to this day. It was renamed as Renault Samsung Motors and sales began to improve almost immediately. The second generation SM5 debuted in 2005, once again based on a Nissan, and the third generation in 2009 based on a Renault platform. The SM5 finally ended in 2019. They also added the SM3 in 2002, the SM7 in 2004, and the QM5 crossover in 2007. During the 2010s, sales were falling and Renault had to revive the company partially through layoffs, partially by building Nissan Rogues at the plant to increase production, and also by introducing new products such as the SM6 and the QM6. Renault had the rights to use the Samsung name until 2022 when it was finally dropped and the company became Renault Korean Motors and it now has a focus on moving into ever more electrified vehicles. This story may not be news to you viewers outside the U.S., either in Korea or perhaps if you're familiar with Renault's businesses, but for me, it was a huge surprise to hear that Samsung not only had considered entering the automotive world, but had actually done so, however briefly. What's fascinating to me is there's a massive what-if here. Korea at the time was the fifth biggest auto industry in the world in the 80s. Samsung had global ambitions as well as producing products to help raise Korean products in a global level of competitiveness. And they had decades of success in multiple industries. And after literally billions of dollars invested, they just happened to launch a car about three months after the Asian financial crisis hit Korea and with fears it would spread across the world. Korean car sales tanked, other conglomerates were declaring bankruptcy, and Samsung was only able to hang on for a couple of years before selling it at a fire sale price to Renault. Sadly, if the car had been released a year earlier or a year or two later, it would have had a chance, and look what the Koreans have managed to do since 2000 in the automobile world. Samsung probably only missed the window, and they absolutely nailed the worst window possible in what really amounts to a 40-year period. They hit the target exactly that they weren't aiming for. Finally, I'll say this video was about the initial Samsung Motors and their first product and the story behind it, but there's surprisingly little information out there about the first SM5. While the company continued for the last two decades with ups and downs, I only wanted to briefly touch on it here to let you know they're still surviving and still somewhat thriving under Renault's care. I want to thank my Patreons who support videos like this, make it possible, and if you enjoy histories and news opinions, please consider showing the channel some love with a like and a subscribe. And I have to say, if you owned one of those SM5s, we really want to hear from you in the comments and what it was like. Thanks so much for being here.